Hey guys, welcome back to Portland. Man, it's been about six months, I guess, since we last saw you. Yeah, it must be, yeah. How's it, how's it been going? How does this year, let's see, last year you released your debut album. You, uh, you played uh, Lollapalooza, you played uh, Austin City Limits, you opened shows for The Who. I guess my question is, how do you follow a year like that? <laughs> More of the same, I, I, I hope. Um, yeah, it is, yeah. Just, just to keep plugging away at this album, keep touring. This tour looks like it's going to be a good one. We started off pretty well last night, so just just to keep on the road, really. I know you guys um, come from a very tiny little place called the Isle of Man over in the UK. So when you yeah. go back, are you big celebrities over there? Not really. It's it's like a crash down to earth. So so it's got what a population? How big? It's about seventy five thousand. Yeah. 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 Um, do they realize that you're yeah. that you're hitting it big here, over here in America? <laughs> um, probably not. Well, but, but if we if we are hitting it big, I don't think we are. Really. I don't know. Oh, I think most people who know music think you guys are well on your way to being very successful. I I was curious because I had read that you never started really singing for the band until your your bandmate died in a car accident. Is that right? Well, uh, not entirely. Um, he uh, well. The band hadn't been been born long, had it? Uh, so when Brian died, seven or eight months. Or yeah, so I, I'd only been singing about that, that much. So it because it strikes me, your voice is so mature. It's a mature voice. So you, were you singing with your father at home? Where were you getting your vocal training? Not at all. I, I've had very little vocal training. The only thing I, I've had is is to try and make sure I don't wear my voice out. But um. No, I, I only started singing because no one else would. <laughs> In the early days, you were a five-piece. You had another member as well as uh, a lead singer, and uh, you're now a trio. Talk on that a bit. How how different is it playing as a three-piece as opposed to having five members in the band? Well, actually, actually, it was still, it was a it was a four-piece when we. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, when uh, when Brian was in the band, it was it was completely different. We were um, just starting out. Literally, we were all very very young. We hadn't really got on the, the pub circuit as a band, although individually we'd done gigs and stuff. Um, and then when Brian died, um, we were we were forced into a situation really, which was either you know, give it up, which would have been incredibly easy since we were so young, still at school, whatever, um, or carry on doing it without him. And, and we never ever uh, discussed replacing him in any kind of way. That was never an option. So. The debut album has brought you to this point. Has there been any talk as a band that hey, you know, maybe for the next album, let's add a keyboard player. Let's see where that. You want an organ player? If, it, if it's up to me, if it's up to me, we'd have horn sections, gospel choir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would love, I love Hammond organ. I love Hammond organ. Yeah. I think it's so weird to be in such an adult world and still not be able to get a drink. That must just be the <laughs> most that, uh, bizarre thing yeah, to be uh, yeah. shuffled into these little bars and cordoned off from all the partiers <laughs> and then, you know, you entertain and you're shuffled back out. Yeah, nice cup of tea and sit down and put your slippers on really nice. Because back home you can drink, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Eighteen. Yeah. So we've been drinking for two years. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> that is that is kind of a funny visual where they can't drink and they're up on stage singing about you know nursing a hangover and guarding my outside woman and keeping a bulldog on my old lady back home. Because I have to say your your lyrics your themes are very adult and I'm just wondering kind of what are you what are you channeling to be writing this stuff? Uh, sometimes you you write about being in someone else's shoes and when you listen to blues an awful lot that's you know that's going to rub off. Um, that, that kind of style is going gonna, is gonna to kind of, you absorb it. So a lot of it's that, but I mean, there, there are songs in there that have, you know, that have been experiences like Stay, which is, which is about um, two of our friends, including Brian, a rhythm guitar player. Um, so really, it's, it's, it's all about influence. Now. I think that that's got to be the most important thing, is to keep listening to stuff. The more you listen, the, the more varied your output's going to be. Yeah. You mentioned John Mayer was one of your current heroes. And your span of influence just ranges from some of the greats, B.B. King, all the way up to Jimi Hendrix. And mm -hmm. So your current favorites in terms of who you're listening to and who you're being influenced by? John Hyatt. Yeah. I think John Hyatt is so underrated. I mean, the guy is just, he's so prolific. He just keeps writing stuff. And his new album as well, uh, Master of Disaster, is, uh, that's, that's been on my iPod at all. It's... Um, Right, good right taste. <laughs> really good taste. It's 
Speaking of taste, any taste in women here? U.S., British, you want to give us a, on the scale of one to ten? Well, if, if this gets posted on YouTube, I'm going to be in big trouble. Yeah. So I'm going to stay still on this one. I'd say uh, both about equal. Yeah? Keep it neutral. <laughs> both equal. Yeah. 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 They're all, all good. Yeah. Hopefully one day we'll be including, you know, Soviet women, Chinese women. You'll have a plethora to choose around. The whole world. The world, world tour. Ross and Adam, let's talk to your influences. Uh, as drummers and bass players who were your... Uh, Pino Palladino, oh, bass Pino, yes. Yeah? Exactly. Well, then you Enjoy. must have really enjoyed opening for the Who, then. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah. Talk about that. Did you get to talk to him at all? Or? Only briefly. He kind of pulled up with um, Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey, got out of the car, jumped out, shook my hand. Massive. I was looking right up at the sky. <laughs> <you know, laughs> Shaking. I, I kind of said something stupid, like, oh, you're my hero, mate. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right, yeah. I love He's my hero. I love uh, Steve Jordan. He plays with Peter Pardino with, with John Mayer. Uh -huh. I think he's fantastic, but uh, John Bonham, I think, has to be... As a drummer, yeah. He's, what he's drummer quite cliche to say that now, but can't help it. He's, he's one of the best. He's probably the best. I love Steve Gadd as well. But I, at the moment, I, I like Steve Jordan a lot. I think he's playing I really something I would like, love to play like that and go down that feel, way. Yeah, yeah feel, feel for the song. Well, we're totally charmed by your music, guys. Wish you the best of success. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You very very nice. nice to see you guys again, and yeah. continued luck. Looking forward to hearing the next record when it comes out. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.